Good morning, good morning. Good morning. So we have Siobhan. Yeah. Siobhan, it's already been said a thousand times, uh, is uh, UK's first wedding coordinator from, from 1996. We have Tracy here, um, who is the uh, founder and director of WEDEX, which is, um, uh, is an industry training organization, um, a network organization. Uh, we have Hazel right on the end with her hair, beautiful. Um, Hazel um, is a, um, a business consultant for entrepreneurs in the wedding industry and particularly focusing on venue marketing. Um, and we have Amanda, who is um, planner extraordinaire, inspiration behind the NAWP, um, International Wedding Trailblazer, and collectively they are the managing team of the National Association of Wedding Professionals. Um, which is a network and organisation. So I'm hoping, we're all hoping, that I know a thing or two about networking, or, to use a C word, connection. What I want to do to open things up is to, um, if you don't mind, if you could, um, each of you in turn, give me a brief, sort of like one sentence, um, and a different answer each, please, on why you think um, connecting in the industry is important, what you benefit from connecting. Why should we even be considering it? Okay, so for me, the value of connections is you never know what's going to come from meeting somebody or, or where that could lead. And I think from my hospitality days, that, that fact of never knowing where a lead would come from or where your client is, everyone's a potential customer. Um, for me, connections are, are all about following that ethos and just connecting up with the right people, um, getting to know people and seeing the value that each of you do, whether or not you, you may or may not work together. It might be that they know other people that would be right for you. So just really seeing the value in everyone you meet. Good morning, everyone. Um, for me, connections really were the key to starting and continuing and flourishing in my career. Um, starting as a, we a young wedding coordinator in an, what was a very scary, very big world um, back 16, 17 years ago, um, I networked and networked and networked. I met everybody. I asked questions. I got out there. I didn't stick in a little group. I sort of made sure that I worked a room, and it was one of the best things I did. It pushed me into an industry that was already kind of quite saturated with quite a lot of other young wedding planners wanting to be, you know, the top of their game. Um, and it was those connections that I made that kind of saw me from job to job to job and, and eventually starting my own wedding planning business and becoming a successful wedding planner. Um, for me, when I started, um, as Johnny said in his talk yesterday, there weren't really networking opportunities. There weren't the fam trips and meetings and certainly not symposiums like this. So the thing that I learned really early on was the importance of building that team because as a wedding planner, you, you need different suppliers. You're working with them all the time and you're continuing finding new ones as well, which I know Johnny mentioned yesterday too. Um, so I know how much it, it drove my career path as well and how important it was. And then moreover, since starting the NAWP, that the proof has been in the pudding is just the collaborations that have happened through our members, um, the opportunities that are created. And I think just generally the, the comfort of being in an environment where you're with like-minded professionals in itself is, is a reassuring and good thing. The, the thing that I always say is that most of us in this industry are one-man bands or very small enterprises, but we're part of a larger team. You can't have a wedding without a photographer and a cake and a floor. So ultimately, we are actually part of the same team, and I think that's important to remember in our industry, and that's why networking works. Um, for me, um, I started my uh, wedding awards five years ago, and at the evening of the gala, to look out and see all of these people together. And the one thing that came from that that I hadn't expected was the communication that was going on, the connecting, the the conversation was just buzz 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 and from that um, I realized that there was a, a strong need for that so I started an online community which has now come offline um, and is invaluable to all of us um, effective networking is different to networking we can all walk into a room and see lots of people as we've done today and say I must talk to these people but okay. actually effective networking is something where you. you do talk to these people but you also follow up after 
afterwards. And if there's something that you see in that person that you can help them, then definitely keep in touch, make an effort. It's fine chatting, but just don't leave it there. Make more of it, and it's, then it's effective. Great. Okay, so let's get down to brass tacks. Um, Hazel, as a coach, what sort of skills do you think are needed? I mean, the people in this room are obviously already good at connecting because you're here, but can you say a little bit more about what kind of skills you need to cultivate to be a good connector? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Um, so, again, like, like you just said, Andrew, the fact that you're actually here shows that you're willing and open and want to network in the first place. Everyone I've met over the last two days has been so happy and, you know, ready to connect and interact and wants to know what you do and why you, why, where you could work together or, you know, just get to know each other. Um, so, one of the main things I say to the businesses I work with before they go to a networking event is to do a bit of research beforehand. Is it the right networking event for you? How mm -hmm. are you going to find that out? I think, you know, speaking to the other businesses that are of the same level or, you, or the same service, you operate on the same weddings and events, chatting to them about events they go to that work well for their business, having a chat to the organiser, that, you know, they don't, they're happy to chat to you. They're there to run an event. They want you to get the most out of it. So just getting in touch with them and saying, you know, who do you think will be there? What do you think will be covered? Who would you recommend I connect with at the event So as you'd well? be quite strategic. You would... Oh, like, definitely. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we're all time precious. Uh, it doesn't matter where you are. We're all, we all have limited time. So putting the time into the research means that you're going to get the most out of the event when you get there. Um, the other thing you can ask for is an attendee list before the event. Not every event's happy to give them out, but if they are, then you can do a bit of homework on who you think would be a good fit for you to meet in that room. That doesn't mean that I undervalue the other businesses at all, but it's good to be strategic about having, you know, key three people that you want to meet within that space uh, during that okay. time. Um, and then, you know, have a backup list because it might be that they don't turn up or that, you know, you don't okay. necessarily meet them. Also having like five top people that you want to connect with mm -hmm. um, and, and prioritizing them. And then just relax. Like actually we all buy from people and being able to say straight what you do in a really relaxed and informal way, but professional. To, and perhaps practice that a little bit, be confident. You're all here, so you all know this bit already about telling people who you are and what you do. But tailor it the same as you would in a sales pitch to a client. Um, you know, have a look at what their name badge says and how potentially you could work together. So just thinking about, you know, offering up a bit of valuable advice or, you know, a connection. You might not be the right connection, but recommending them to somebody else okay. who might be his next to you. So Tracy, do you mind just chipping in here for a second? Um, how would you go about, like, you've identified someone that you want to connect with and you think this is a bunch of people that I think would be good for my business, my career, my uh, uh, training knowledge. Um, how would you go about it? How can I help you? You know, it's all very well. You'll want something. Of course, we all want something. But yeah. actually, it's like, how can I help you? Okay. And if they say, do you know what, I need to find this particular supplier, I need to be connected to someone else, then you say, I can do that. And if it, obviously, if you can do that. Um, but um, yeah, it's really important to actually find out how you can help them, because by doing that, you're helping yourself because, you know, there's a connection instantly. So it's really important to say, you know, what, what can I do for you? Okay. Um, rather well, what, than what I was thinking, though, Tracy, is because you, you promote online communities. Um, you can't just walk up to someone and say, how can I help you? Is it, is it kind of like just coming back for a yeah. second? Okay. H how would you make your initial contact with them? In person? I don't know. That's what oh, my no, question oh, is okay. for you. Uh, if, you're, if you are part of an online community, I think it's very important to be engaging. <coughs> don't sit in the background and just not you know, kind of be there. Um, even if you're liking comments in a community that, you, that are connecting with. So you're talking about online communities, and that's yeah. funny because... How many people are in an online community in the wedding profession? Can I just have a show of hands? Okay, like a quarter, maybe. Okay. Um, so that means three quarters of us either aren't or don't know that they even okay. exist. Maybe we should just deal with that for a second. Okay, so for the people who are in a community, they're probably in a community that in some way connects to either their um, area of the industry. Okay, where are these communities? What are they? Online, Facebook communities, um, generally closed groups. Um, the one that I have is not one that I promote 
hugely because it's um, a, a small group in comparison to some of the larger groups, mm -hmm. 750 people. Um, but I do know them all, um, and I make sure that, that they are people that I get to know. Um, yeah. And then obviously it is that thing of how can I help you? Okay. Um, but if, if people are not involved in a, an online community, um, <coughs> the, the important thing is to find one that is relevant to you because there are so many it's very easy just to you know be part of so many of them but really is one that you are going to be able to add something to and also get something back from um, and then obviously if they from our communities we actually have in-person events as well yeah. um, so one of the things that we did was the training um so is we the oh, National sorry. Association of Women it's, Professionals. No, it's me. Okay. Um, yep. <laughs> it's it's the, the royal we. Okay. Um, but um, yeah, so as part of the um, NAWP, we, we have these networking events in person. Mm. Um, and that is where a lot of people are doing exactly that, is connecting. And um, we're there to support them to do that. Okay. Siobhan, your experience. I mean, you know, you, you have developed uh, a career where you were uh, winning clients, high profile clients, how on earth do you connect? How do you network to get those kind of clients? I'd say it was Joan really... Collins, for example. I don't know. No, I shouldn't make a specific example, but you know what I mean? In some ways, I, d I don't really know other than your reputation, obviously, um, precedes you with that. And also really important with those kind of clients, as I'm sure people here know, is that you're, you're discreet too. Um, but I think when, when I started, because there weren't any other wedding planners, it was, I was coming, I didn't know whether I had an absolutely brilliant idea or an idea that so many people had thought of and it was just never going to work. So it wasn't just starting my own business, it was actually educating people on what a wedding planner does. Yeah. And obviously it was so different then. I had an ad in the back of, a classified ad in the back of Brides and You and Your Wedding. That would bring me 12 weddings a year. I mean, can you ever imagine that working now? Um, but I think it's, it's just about being supportive within the industry, and I certainly credit Sandra Bowler, who was then the editor of Brides, and Carol Hamilton at You and Your Wedding. They were really proactive, really interested in what I was doing, and in educating couples So you couples cultivated about a it. relationship with magazines? Yes. That was your starting point, wasn't mm -hmm. it? Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. how did you do that? How do you, how do you cultivate a relationship with a magazine? I just contacted them. I mean, yeah. I hadn't got any sort of PR experience or anything. Okay. I just sent sort of more or less what looks like a press release saying what I did and then yeah. follow up with a phone call, which again, you know, rarely happens now. Um, and I think it's just coming back to what Tracy was saying, you know, the online communities are great, but there is no replacement for meeting in p person as well. And people slightly shy away from that now. It's like, oh, we're so busy, we can't possibly have a meeting. Yes, you can, because that's what works. That's what it's about. Y you don't just have a phone conversation with your clients, do you? You meet them to get an idea of the sort of wedding that they want. And it's just the same in business relationships too. That's how they're cultivated. Okay. Um, but certainly, obviously, once you've done a couple of high-profile weddings, then, yeah, the, the secret's out in in terms of they talk to each other or people just know nothing leaked on that so therefore you'd be the go-to person all right amanda do you want to chip in for a second because obviously you've just been saying siobhan um you know there's no substitute for meeting them in person but before you meet them in person amanda do you you know we, we, we've obviously done the bit about the research do you kind of like scope them out online and like make initial connections online would you advocate that um i Again, I kind of started my career back before all of the social media kind of blow up. So mm -hmm. for me, it was very much like what Siobhan had said. It was yeah. kind of, I would do my research, who's kind of at the top of their game at the moment, which was this young lady next to me, uh, one of them. Um, and again, I would reach out and contact them. It was never an email. I would never. I did email in the beginning. Um, no one ever came back to me. I wonder why. Uh, there was probably about 15, 16 emails a day that would come behind my one or in front of my one that people just like, oh, just another wannabe wedding planner. And it, unfortunately, at the time that I was starting in my career, there was a movie called The Wedding Planner. And it just started this chain of people going, oh, God, this is my dream job and I want to do it. And yeah. But it's something that I had always wanted to be involved in, more of an events side of things. I was a coordination freak from the age of being born, I think. But okay. it was one of those things that I just always knew was in me. I wanted to create amazing parties and things. So for okay. me, um, it was getting in touch with people, calling, let's have a coffee, let's sit okay. down, let's meet, let's meet Can face I just to face. Um, ask you to expand on that a little bit? So there are quite a few planners in the room and who would you connect with as a planner? I'm a supplier, so I connect with planners, but who does planner connect with? 
planners. Other planners? For me, it was planners. It was people right. who had already done it. And there, was, there wasn't really a lot of people who would kind of listen or actually share their knowledge. But the thing is, and this is where the end, there was no NAWP, there was nothing really, a, well, there was actually, but it was in America, it was called um, the a Bridal Association out in America, ABC, the Association of Bridal Consultants. Okay. Um, I went to them, I went over to America, I spent money, I got on an airplane, I flew to the States, and I networked with other planners who had been doing this out in the States for years, and they were willing to share advice with me. There was a big enough pie that we could all have a piece of it. And from an NAWP stance, I get where they were coming from. They wanted to cultivate good planners. They didn't just want people to kind of wing it. This is the biggest, this is the biggest spend of a couple's life, um, their wedding day. They're not gonna throw a dinner party that's gonna cost them thousands and thousands of pounds on a yearly basis. Well, some might, I don't know. I mean, but um, so I found that other planners who were willing to talk to me, and there were many planners that were willing to talk to me. And when I got to that stage in my career, I was willing to speak to people who were just starting out on their career. Um, because you want them to you want them to do this right. You want them to learn um, how to work with clients, how to network, how to grow as a good wedding okay. coordinator, how to run an ethical business, um, how you work with other people in the industry. What's an, you know, I go back to the word ethical how to run an ethical business okay. so that you respect other people who have been here first. Siobhan, um, so you obviously connected with the press uh, as one of your you know, particular strategies. Uh, would you say that's still relevant today? Yeah, it's an interesting one, isn't it? Because I think, um, you know, just as I said about the advert in the back of the magazines that would never work now, and, um, and the two editors at the magazines that were hugely supportive, but obviously you always had to wait maybe two months, but more likely four months until the issue came out that you were in. Now, of course, we all self-publish. Um, and I think it's, it's a really difficult one. You know, someday, sometimes I kind of hark back to that time and think they were almost halcyon days. It was a lot easier. But at the same time now, you're in control of your own press, what's put out there. Um, so I think now, obviously, social media is the beast that we all have to be involved in. Mm -hmm. and, um, and obviously, that's where a lot of sources are are now for people to find you for if they're wanting somebody to comment on something that's in the news or whatever they may yeah. well find you that way okay. but obviously it's all about the credibility behind it you know you, that you've got a website you've got Facebook you've got Instagram okay. you're just you know omnipresent more or less now I noticed um, in the last few years the rise of the styled shoot yeah. um, and I guess the question is do they work do you think that you know because there are so many platforms now it's not like one critical magazine that you get in, but it's, it's a multitude of platforms and social. Do you, do, you, do you think that's a strategy that's successful, working? I'm, I'm going to throw to Hazel on this one as well, but I think um, there are great... What I say actually to my students is there a great opportunity when you haven't done anything yet to showcase right. your work and your inspiration. Mm -hmm. And that's how you should use them. Once you're busy, you may not really have the time to be involved in them. And I think the most important thing is that um, if you're thinking of doing something like that, to contact the site or the magazine that you're wanting it published in. Don't just come up with an idea because you could end up wasting yours and your supplier's time. But Hazel's involved with them with a lot of her suppliers. So, yeah, I'd like to... Yeah, so I would throw that back to you and say, you're talking about styled shoots, what is it you want to get out of them? Because that's where I would start with a styled shoot. You're saying, are they effective? Well, what were their goals when they set out about doing those shoots? Was it lead generation? Was it PR? Was it content? So those are the things I consider when I'm talking to my businesses and, and clients and, and our you know, associates and members as well about, you know, you're thinking about doing a styled shoot, why are you doing it? Because is it that it's an investment into your business? Like you said, as new businesses, it's invaluable creating the right content with the right group of suppliers mm. and maybe a venue that you'd like to work at. So it's a good opportunity to meet them as well. But it largely depends on the style of the shoot, the photographer, the publication it's going to go in and what you're looking to create. So as Siobhan said, having that initial discussion with the publication or blog mm. um, and asking them what they're looking for. So then you can create a shoot brief around that that yeah. um, is you know, of, of a good level. And there's networking involved in that as well. That would be, so that's certainly been my impression that yeah. uh, obviously a style shoot would be for PR, but on the subject of connections, 
that seems to be one of the benefits of it that you, you know it definitely is so i mean we do quite a few i'm com based in cornwall and devon and with the businesses that i work with down there we probably do about 10 to 15 a year but they need to be for the right reasons, as we well, said. Well. Um, and those reasons can be that actually the venue wants to showcase a new space or a new um, opportunity or a new mm -hmm. event area. For the suppliers, it might be their supply chain that they already work with, or it might be that they're looking to create something completely different. So it's a great opportunity to network with that supply chain, grow relationships with the venues, with the planners, with the organizers, the stylists, the, the suppliers, and actually, because you're all at the same level, um, get referrals from them as well. Please do. Um, one of the major things I would say about a style shoot is to make sure it is on brand. Um, it's very simple within my community. I have a lot of new um, suppliers pop up and new planners, and they say, I want to do a style shoot. And 50 people just say, I'll do it with you, I'll do it with you. And I actually private message them and say, pick the ones that are on brand with you, because it's very easy to just um, find lots of people who are excited about doing a style shoot. And that's wonderful, but is it going to be you know, the right stylist for you? Is it going to be the right cake maker, the right photographer, you know, the images you're trying to create, the right ones for you? So it, even if you're trying to do it for your website, it's really important that you are looking at you know, the final um, sort of cut, which is obviously your brand. So just an important call. And I would just, sorry, add to the end of that, sorry, Tracy, is that if you are a supplier looking to be, you've been approached about being involved in a shoot, you probably get approached quite a lot to be involved in shoots. So looking at the other suppliers that are involved in it and the venue location and the publication are very important. Um, I also know that for the suppliers that we work with in, on the different shoots, that they are, they are referring those other suppliers to the other venues that they're working at. So they'll go off and do a wedding um, or a wedding inquiry at a different venue and having seen the work from your business, which they might not have seen before, they are then recommending. I appreciate there is an order in fact of how we get booked, but there, you know, there are still suppliers recommendations as well as the planners, the stylists in the venue. One, one last thing actually. <laughs> <laughs> Something that has come from NAWP is some of these style shoots that have been produced by members who have been, they've been incredible um, and have gone on to do amazing things and they've ended up in some fabulous places. But um, one of the things, the major parts of that is that all of those suppliers were of the same, um, yeah. came, same calibre, yeah. Mm. <laughs> Fantastic. So what I would like our audience here to benefit from is some ideas on how you can connect. So obviously a style shoot is an idea. Now let's see if there are any other ideas. Um, uh, you know, I personally will chip in and say that I, I use LinkedIn quite a lot. I never used to like a few years ago and now I'm all over it. And uh, because um, particularly if your relationship might be with a, a venue where um, a team member might change career or sort of change jobs and you follow. So I'm just wondering if you would like to you know, if any of you would like to chip in and suggest a way in which a platform or an opportunity or direction in which you can connect. This is not a platform. This is um, an in-person um, suggestion. Um, it's called an NAP, and it's, sorry, an NAM, which is a NAM, and that's a non-agenda meeting. So I would recommend that everybody who is here arranges to have a NAM and that is a non-agenda meeting. So you arrange to see someone that you've met today. You're not looking to achieve anything from that meeting. You're just going to connect and you're going to have a chat. And I can guarantee that everyone that holds one of these meetings, something will come from that meeting. Um, you're Without not there even to being particularly strategic about it, would you say? Obviously pick the person that you think okay. you know, you're, you're aligned with or you mm -hmm. feel you're interested in or you feel that there's someone that you, know, you, you have some kind of connection with. Okay. Um, but I do suggest that by having those meetings, um, you just don't know what's going to come from those meetings, but you're both kind of going into that meeting not expecting anything. Um, and seriously, every single meeting I've had like that, something comes from it. In can fact, I, can I follow on from that, from Tracy, and just say, for all the planners in the room, um, new or seasoned, as much as we are in a social media, kind of the day of social media, I honestly do not think that there is anything better than actually just going and visiting your suppliers. As a planner, things move so quickly and like 
you know, there's always new trends. You're never, even if you visit the same supplier two, three times in a year, there's always something new to learn. There is always going to be, you're going to walk away with a little nugget of something that you didn't already know or that they, they've heard of a new venue. There is just nothing that compares to actually getting out there. Spend time networking. And I know that you've probably heard it a million times, but it's how I did it. It's how I became a, a seasoned planner okay. who was was recommended highly by not just other planners, but by uh, by suppliers. Can I just quickly chip in? Um, sitting on the front row here, uh, a friend, colleague here, Stuart Wood. Um, he's from Derby. I'm from central London. I can meet anyone, anytime. I just don't seem to ever get round to it. <laughs> he's from Derby. He comes down on the train and he says, I'm in town. Are you available? And you know what? There's something about that spontaneity or that immediacy that I often think he gets probably more meetings than I do <laughs> because he just, you know, uh, you know he, he makes it time specific. Whereas I, if I arrange a meeting, it'll be like three weeks' time whenever our diary is scheduled rather than like, are you free or you're not? And I, I think that actually what you're saying, Amanda, is if you're going to um, approach things in that way, then sometimes it's a bit more, and, and your nan, you know, a little, a little bit more kind of low-key, um, and let's have a cup of coffee. That must surely uh, be a good ploy, a, you know, good strategy. Definitely, and I, I think the thing also that I would add for suppliers wanting to work with planners or, or at venues is to never be afraid of approaching as well, you know, really speaking to anybody who's sort of new in the audience here, but um, speaking as a planner, you, you do always want to know what, what's going on or see new products um, with your suppliers, just as Amanda said, it, you know, even if you've not worked with them that year, go and see them at the end of the year when you've got your quiet time, because there'll be something that comes out of it, some inspiration, something that you use. And, but equally, if you, if you contact a planner and don't hear back, or they can't meet you for a while, that's sort of typical during the busy season. Don't be put off. Um, if something piques my interest, I'll say, you know, I'm going to pop it in a file on my email, and I'll be in touch sort of come October, November, when I've got more time on my hands, and schedule those meetings then. Um, so, so don't be put off. You know, it's, it is just as we've been saying, it's all about collaboration. A, a plan or a venue needs you as much as you need them, and just as Amanda said, there's always something new as well, you know, that you're all coming up with, you're all creatives. I just wanted to add as well, and I, I know it's scary, especially when you're starting, you kind of think, there's all these networking events and I'm going to walk into a room full of people that I don't know, and how am I supposed to walk up to someone and go, hi, I'm Amanda, nice to meet you, yes, I want to be a wedding planner, and how do I, it, that's not the time to start doing that. Go and meet the suppliers first. Have a chat with them, a coffee, one-on-one. -on -one. Let them know what you're doing, what you're interested in, you know, kind of like what your kind of design kind of ideas are and things and get from them. And then when you go to these networking meetings, you're going to start seeing people that you know. You've, you've met them away from that. And then you'll just have the general chit-chat because usually at networking meetings, you have a general chit-chat. No one's there to kind of really mm. drill anyone. Yep. But you're going to, if you go first, you get out there, meet the suppliers, wherever that may be. You do it in a hotel because like, then you'll get to see the hotels, um, the people who are working in the hotels as well, so you'll get to see all the events team make the make kind of, yeah, kind of kill, two, kill two birds with one stone. And then when you do get to networking events like an NAWP event or um, you know any event, and there's loads of them, um, you know, people used to say to me, oh my god, you'd go to the opening of an envelope. Yes, I would, because at the end of the day, <laughs> sorry. Uh, do you mind if I, no. um, to, to actually uh, uh, sort of reinforce what you're saying, uh, one of the things that I quite like to do um, is to I, I try to know something about anyone that I want to connect with, a little thing. Absolutely. You know, whether, even if it's something, uh, I went to see Antoinette Lettieri a few months ago, and I, I know that she has a young daughter. And to, to be able to have something like particular that you can like know about something, yeah. it's a great, I mean, I, I do it because I'm interested, but it's also a natural way in which you can connect you've with the, someone. You've hit the nail on the head. People want to know you're interested in them yeah. and yeah. genuinely interested mm -hmm. in them. If you've got a love for this industry, you are genuinely interested in what people are doing yeah. and what, what's going on in their minds and their design and, you know, yeah. kind of what, and, and what got them to where they are today. I mean, I can see Rob and Johnny there and I used to go and meet with them and, like, we'd have a chat. Hi, hello, <laughs> darlings. You know, and you, and you would and it would just be lovely okay. to know what people are doing and, you know, what work they're doing and what's happening in the industry and you kind of then get to know, okay, this is kind of what I need to be doing, you know, where I need to be going with this networking thing. 
I'll just add to that, yeah, that it's very much about the personal approach and finding out about someone. I'm sure everybody in this room gets those emails of, hi there, I've looked at your website and I love what you do and I'd really like to work with you. It's not even got your name on the email. I feel absolutely no compulsion to even reply to that because they've not even found out my name, so they've certainly not looked at my website. Sure. And it's the same when you're meeting people. You can tell straight away if they're interested or, or not. Um, so I think, yeah, but it's a good point that you made about finding that sort of connection to yeah, please do. Um, one of the things that I would suggest as well, um, with the WEDEX seminars that we hold, every single one that we've held, I have um, either PMs or phone calls the night before saying, I can't do this, I'm, I'm too anxious, I can't be there, I, I'm not sure how I'm going to cope when I walk through the door. And I always say, um, just come and see me when you arrive. Uh, firstly, I'll give you a hug. Um, and secondly, I will introduce you to whoever you need to introduce. And at the end of the event, everyone will say, you're right, I managed it, I got through it. I think as creatives, we have a very heightened anxiety rate. Um, and sometimes you just need someone to talk to. So even if it's an event that you're going to and you think that you're going to struggle, speak to the organizer because someone there will support you. And I not going to look in any particular direction but I know that there is someone here today that um, this kind of thing happened and it was really nice to be able to support them and know that when they did arrive that they were relaxed and they you were open to learning and then left happy so we're all in the same position so it's really okay to open up and just ask for a bit of support. Mm. Um, I'm mindful of the time we're Already 10 minutes over our slot. Should we go to a Q&A or can I just keep asking them questions? Q&As? <laughs> okay, all right. Um, would anyone like to pose a question to the NAWP? Hi, ladies, thanks for that. Um, when you're talking about scheduling an NAM meeting, um, I, mean, I have quite a few good connections with people in this room and outside, so I'm lucky. Um, but in terms of wanting to reach out to new people like venues or planners that I haven't worked with before, how do you go about reaching out to say, hey, let's have a catch up, a meeting, can I come and meet you? Because a lot of the times, if they haven't met you before and they don't know you, they won't feel obliged to just have a catch up. I think, um, just as we've said, it's really important to do your research first. If I got an email from you saying, hi there, I love your website, I'd love to work with you, it means nothing to me. So address the person by name, find out who you're going to contact. And it, then it's rude not to reply. I never not reply when something is addressed to me, no matter how time short I am. And, um, and, and obviously then a link to your website that we can go and have a look at your work. Like I said, it may not be immediate because sometimes in the throes of the busy time, in the busy season, and you haven't really got the time to be researching it. But as planners, um, you're always looking for, for what's new and refreshing your suppliers I as agree. well. Um, yeah, I've met quite a few venues here over the last sort of day and a half already. Um, going to events like this, everybody's here because they want to be here. They chose to be here. They know that they're going to have conversations with people they haven't met before. Um, and they're ready for that. So, you know, by going to those events, you're automatically putting yourself in a better position to make those connections. And I always treat networking like dating, essentially. You're not going to go in with a, like, l let's go home together on the first date. You don't do that. That's not cool. That's not how it works. You don't turn up and snog when you've never met before. So when you think of it like that, like, and treat your business relationship as the same because, you, you know, you're not going to go up to somebody in another business and say, okay, yeah, okay, this is what I do, come work with me, off we go. That, that rarely ever happens without any research or knowledge beforehand. So treat your business connections like your personal connections in the respect that actually it's a courtship. People don't want to be hard sold to. They, uh, they buy from you because they like you and there's something about you that they really get and then the rest happens naturally. Yes, you need to be able to say who you are and what you do, but then like you said, just listen to what they do and then see where the common ground is. Hi, Alison Hargreaves, Guides for Brides. Um, this one's for you, Andrew, and uh, perhaps Hazel. I'm really interested, bearing in mind the fact that we know that our couples online are really quite keen on video now rather than photos, why almost every styled shoot still is photographic, and they're not really bringing a video in as a central component. Sometimes there's a, a video of this was the making of the styled shoot, sort of following the photographer. But it would be really, really lovely to be 
seeing if something more could be done. I don't know if there's any thoughts on that. Okay, so, I mean, from my side of things, a lot of the work I do in my business, which is just my name, is, is venue-based. So I'm working with venues to create their content, their marketing, writing their strategy, etc. So Style Shoot does play parts in that throughout the year. <laughs> Um, you're very right about video content. So the last three shoots we've done have had video content in them of the, sh of the shoot, basically on video, and also highlights for the social media. So we've done Instagram highlights to leak over, you know, as we see fit. So they've got both options. But I think that's probably something that people have only started realizing recently, and I don't know if it's something that everybody's doing. Um, a, a lot of the time, the reason the venues are doing the shoots is because they want the content for their website and their marketing and the PR opportunities <coughs> as well. So they're not necessarily thinking about the video element, which they should be. They definitely should be. Can I jump in? Second? Go for it. Um, part of our awards, um, I wanted to try, and because it's a local four counties award, I want to try and make something more than that. So all of the winners have come together for a styled shoot which is challenging um, because they aren't all on brand um, and um, trying to coordinate lots of different people in that way is quite difficult but we've always had the images to use and promote on blogs or magazines but also we have a video and the videos are of the whole event but also of each of the suppliers as well so it's really handy for them to use in their own social media and, and sort of content as well but through the training that I do, um, video and um, marketing and, and content is, is really important and that's something we're pushing a lot. Okay, so very quickly, um, as a filmmaker, the first thing I always think of is what, what, what's my audience and what do I want them to see? And I think the problem with video for a style shoot is that it's come from the place of behind the scenes making of. And unless that's really interesting, I as a filmmaker wouldn't get involved in it because I think you've got to tell a story that we actually want to watch. I'm not making stuff for vanity. You know, we're really busy. It's got to be good stuff. Uh, when I um, um, had the good fortune um, earlier this year to create something for Brockett Hall uh, with Stephen Pellier and... I'm not going to mention your name again. You're getting too much PR. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes. Um, I thought to myself, well, actually... Um, I don't know that I want to do behind the scenes making of. I want to do the front of the scenes actually happening. Um, and what I did was to create a narrative uh, working together where we, um, you know, people don't buy spaces, they buy dreams or stories about spaces. And we've got to uh, direct and, con and create, and we ended up creating several films where we, 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 we created an exciting story around that venue, Brockett Hall, and it looks like a TV advert. And that, to me was like, now that's worth watching, that's, that's good. But there is, a, there is an issue though, photographs are much more easy to put in the blogs and put online. A film is a one-time watch, and you know, um, I think therefore you've got to find the right platform. So I wouldn't personally do a film on every style shoot, I would choose where you've got the best of the best and you're gonna have an audience where they really wanna watch it. Can I, uh, we're done. So I know you guys got a challenge, so I, I want to just hand over to you and present your challenge. Apparently I'm doing it. Um, so really it is kind of a follow on from the NAM. Um, we would like to challenge you, don't panic, it's nothing awful, um, to meet three people, um, to, which is easy to do. And have some follow-up meeting or conversation to continue with that. So the challenge is to communicate with three new people, so not just not your friends. not spoken to before. Not at, just your friends, event, that's, that's the difference. Three thing. complete randos. <laughs> and follow it up. Yeah. And if you need a hand, you can grab yeah, one of us. Yeah, just ask us. Yeah. Yeah. And we won't be checking, but we do trust you. Yeah. <laughs> And actually post a selfie, this would be yes, better, wouldn't it? Post be a selfie with your three new friends yes. on Instagram. <laughs> Tag, see you at Bride Lux. Yeah. And you might not win a prize. <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much for the panel.